In this tutorial, we're going to create a sync using SolidWorks X-Shape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. In the start file, you'll find three ordered geometrical sets, or OGSs. The wall and floor OGS and the faucet and handle OGS will be used later in the workflow, and we'll begin our design in the sink OGS. Let's begin by inserting a globe primitive shape, and we only need six major segments. We can enable the scale by bounding box option to set the width to 580 millimeters. One way to create the bowl of our sink is to define the rim, then invert the top of the globe. So let's select this face and then hold the shift key while clicking the far side of this face to select the entire loop. And from the context toolbar, we can select the crease command. And while the selection is still active, we want to add the XY plane to our selection, but we aren't able to select through the sub D surface so we can go to the top menu to enable the Select Through Subdivision Geometry option, and now we can add the plane to our selection while holding the Control key. The Context Toolbar then gives us one option, to align to geometry, and this will become the rim of the bowl. Next, we'll box select the top of the globe and click the arrow pointing in the Z direction to expose the ruler. We can now click and drag down by 450 millimeters. Globes, cylinders, and cones are useful primitives, but if symmetry is needed, the central vertices where all loops intersect can cause issues with the resulting surface. The best practice if symmetry is needed is to delete these faces and fill the void in the surface. To select all of these faces, we'll go to our selection filters in the top menu and choose Faces. We'll turn on the Select Only Visible Elements option so we don't affect the underside of the sink. Now if we go to make a box selection but return our cursor to the start point, we transition to a lasso selection. But note, if we start our lasso by moving our cursor from right to left, our lasso area is blue and anything touching the lasso will be selected. Making this selection may be easier from the top view. Once selected, we can choose the Delete Faces and Loops command from the action bar to remove these faces. Our Sub-D body is now an open surface. We can select one of the edges and choose the Fill Edges command from the Context toolbar, and we now have a closed surface again. Let's repeat this on the underside of the sink. Because we didn't pin our selection filter, we'll have to set this to faces once again. We'll use a lasso selection, but this time starting from the left to the right, giving us an orange lasso area. This means only faces that are fully encompassed by the lasso will be selected, contrary to the blue lasso from earlier, which selected anything it touched. We can delete the faces using the delete key this time, and once again we'll select one of the open edges and select the Fill Edges command from the Context toolbar. Let's now show the Wall and Floor OGS so we can reference the two planes inside. To create a protrusion off the rear, we'll hold the Control key while selecting the rear two faces and we can choose the Extrude command from the Context toolbar. The new top faces are at an angle, so let's select this one and choose the Tangent Propagation option from the Context Toolbar, then hold the Control key while clicking the XY plane. We can once again align to Geometry to define our flat top surface. Let's now hold the Control key while selecting the rear two faces and choose Crease from the Context Toolbar. While the selection is still active, we can hold the control key while clicking the wall plane and we'll align to geometry. We might notice a slight discoloration in the top surface. 
So let's go to the Tools tab of the Action Bar to turn on the Mesh Inspection tool. This tool identifies issues in the mesh of the Sub-D and highlights them in the Cage view of the model. The Cage view is the mesh from which the Sub-D surface is generated. The faces highlighted in red are intersecting, so let's exit Mesh Inspection and translate the problematic vertex forward just enough so it's between the inner and outer vertices. Next, let's hold on the control key while we select the rear two faces. We want to scale these faces without affecting the top surface, so let's move the robot manipulator. We'll click the center of the robot to deactivate it. We can drag and drop the center of the robot onto another vertex. Once we're ready to make a manipulation, we'll click the center of the robot once again to reactivate it. Let's right-click on the center of the robot to reorient it to XYZ. We can now scale our selection down in two directions, by clicking one scale point and then clicking and dragging another. With the selection still active, let's click to deactivate the scale point and we'll use the Control a keyboard shortcut to select all vertices in the model. Use the triad to move to a side view and switch back to the surface only view. With the robot still in the same position, let's click and drag the scale point in the Z direction to make the entire bowl more shallow by roughly 50%. Focusing on the inner surface of the bowl, let's select the central vertex and translate it down by 50 millimeters. We'll then hold the control key while we select the rear two faces inside the bowl and translate them forward by 50. Selecting the ZX plane in the graphics area gives us the option to turn on symmetry from the context toolbar. Let's now move on to creating a single leg to support our sink. We'll hold the control key while selecting these bottom four faces, and we can scale them down in the X and Y directions before launching the extrude command from the context toolbar. We can use the control key once again to select the four faces and choose the crease command. While the selection is still active, we can hold the control key while clicking the floor plane and choose the Align to Geometry option. Launching the Insert Loops command from the action bar gives us the option to insert more than one loop. Let's insert three. From a side view, let's select this edge and choose the Tangent Propagation option to select the entire loop. We can launch the crease command from down in the action bar, so we get the option to make this a smooth crease. We'll now double click one of the edges to select the entire loop, then hold on the Alt key while clicking and dragging one of the scale points to scale in all directions. With the selection still active, we can translate this down by about 105 millimeters or so. Moving to the upper portion of our sink, let's now double-click this upper edge to select the entire loop and launch the crease command from the action bar. We'll make this crease smooth and then click the arrow to continue adding more creases. Let's select this edge and enable the tangent propagation option and then click to add this final edge and continue. We'll now box select the two loops of vertices right under the bowl and hold the Alt key while we scale them down. And with the selection still active, we can translate this up by about 50 millimeters. To add some style, let's select this edge, then hold the Shift key while selecting the closer half of this edge, and we'll choose the Align Entities by Line command. 
we can drag and drop the endpoints of the line to adjust the selected vertices. Let's have this line at a slight angle up toward the front of the sink. The angle looks great from the side, but not from the top. So let's first grab the rear outer edge and translate it inward by 20 millimeters. We'll then grab the rear top vertex and translate that inward by 25. We'll then hold the control key while selecting these outer two edges and translate them out in the Y direction by about 70 millimeters. We want to adjust this vertex, but we only want to be able to move it in the X and Y directions. So we can click and drag the wedge between the X and Y arrows to move in both directions. Finally, We'll use Tangent Propagation to select the inner crease, then hold the Control key to select one of the outer edges. Releasing the Control key allows us to use Tangent Propagation once more. Now we can launch the Crease command from the action bar to make these smooth creases. Let's exit the subdivision environment, hide the wall and floor OGS, and show the faucet and handles OGS to see how our final design looks. Keep in mind that the faucet and handles are also sub-D bodies that you can edit. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.